I'm Sarah. This is a quick demo of how to use HyperNiche for nonparametric regression. This is a great method for finding relationships between a response variable and one or more predictors, much more flexible and informative than other regression methods. I use this software in my work predicting road-to-stream connectivity from drainage characteristics of logging roads, but most people use it to predict species presence or abundance from climate or other habitat factors. Actually, you can use it for any regression problem when you expect interactive, nonlinear effects of the predictors. If you think about it, that includes most ecological problems. I'm going to use an example dataset that comes with the software, so you can try this too. That dataset has presence-absence data for a tree species, western larch, along with climate variables at the sample points. HyperNiche is really easy to use. To start, put your data in an Excel spreadsheet with each column a different variable, and each row a different observation or sample unit. The top row should be the variable names. The first column contains the name for each observation or sample unit, or you can just number them sequentially. Be sure to put a number in each cell of your data matrix. When you finish setting up your data, save the spreadsheet, then close Excel. You have to close Excel or it will block other software from reading the file. We are going to import the data from the spreadsheet, but first we need to think about the underlying concept of the analysis. HyperNiche wants you to divide your variables into two sets, the response variables and the predictors. The response variables are the dependent variables. That's easy for this data set because we are thinking about species response to climate. So the species, in, in this case, just the one column, larynx, are in the response matrix and the climate variables go in the predictor matrix. A matrix is just a table of numbers. Now start HyperNiche. I had previously put an icon on my desktop during installation. And then we'll import the response matrix. We have this set up as a simple spreadsheet with just the column names as header rows. It's an XLSX file selected down here. We want to read the row names from the file. and the rows are sample units. There is only one column in the response matrix, so we'll call the columns larynx. The row names start in cell A2 and the column names start in B1, so that's already correct. Okay that. Then specify which variables to include and whether they are quantitative or categorical. In this case, we're just going to select Larix. Uncheck all. We treat it as a Q variable, even though it is binary, ones and O's, zeros. Okay. That imports it into a temporary matrix called temp.wk1. And we say, okay, we wish to use this matrix. So that was easy. The first thing we want to do is save it as a name file, file save as. We'll call it larix.wk1. I've done it before, so it's actually already there. Now we'll repeat that process for the predictor matrix. File, import, predictor matrix. Again, the rows are still sample units and we're going to read their names from the file. The columns are climate variables. Okay. In this case, we want to uncheck larynx and leave the rest checked. So we'll put all of the climate variables into the pool that is used to predict presence absence of larynx. These are all quantitative variables, so they all get a Q. Okay. Then OK that new temporary file as the predictor matrix. 
Now we have the predictor matrix as work2.wk1, but we should save it with our own name. File, save as, predictor, select climate.wk1. Okay, it's replacement. I had done this before. Go ahead and save that as a project now. File, save as, project, select lyrics. That, that will allow us to reopen this set of files at any time in the future. Now we're all set to make models of Lyric's presence in relation to the climate predictors. Select Fit Model, Free Search. We want to use a local mean model in this case. We've got a binary response variable, so that is 0 or 1. In the Model Options tab, let's use Medium Overfitting Control. That, this is a usual, reasonable starting point, or you could choose conservative or aggressive, depending on your goals and the data. Let's just leave the other options at the default setting. In the Output Options tab, we're going to leave them as the default too, except let's choose Automatic for minimum neighborhood size needed to make an estimate. Okay. For a title, we'll just type what we are doing, a local mean for lyrics in relation to climate, medium setting. OK. Now it's going to evaluate a whole bunch of models with different combinations of the predictors. So that didn't take long, but there are only 200 sample units. The time to fit the models goes up exponentially with the number of sample units and number of predictors. This model created, this created 633 models. Most of these models are garbage, so we want to filter out the best of the models. So in the model menu, select delete all but best for n predictors. That is, the best one predictor model, the best two predictor model, and so on. This leaves us with just four models with increasing numbers of predictors. The best one, use, the best one predictor model uses wet days. The best two predictor model uses wet days and mean annual temperature. Let's go ahead and save that model list. File, save as, unsaved model list. Let's call the file Larix Local Mean Medium. OK. In the future, we want to come back to this. We can reopen this model list. Now that we have some models, we can do something fun with it by graphing the probability of the species occurrence in relation to the BEX predictors for that species. So we'll see how the probability of Larix is related to wet days and mean annual temperature. So we'll select Graph. Fit response curves, 3D, 3D projection. We'll just take the defaults here. The two predictors are listed. On the model type tab, the model type is specified in the model list, so we don't have to do anything here. So OK that, and we'll reuse the title. Now we have to decide what to do with the result file that was created during the model fitting phase. With the new procedure we are requesting, it is going to override the result file, so it is asking you what to do with it. It has good statistics in it, so let's save it. I should probably have saved it before, but let's go ahead and save it now. So I'll just call it Larix Local Mean Medium. Now it builds the sur response surface and shows it in 3D. You can see, you can view this from different angles by dragging it. If you select contour, you can look at it from a bird's eye view of the same surface.
or you can look at it in slices, taking multiple parallel slices through the surface. You'll notice that this surface has some cutouts. The gray areas are part of the predictor space where there are insufficient data to make an estimate. The cutoff for that is set by the minimum neighborhood size that we selected. We can actually fill that in by lowering the cutoff. It's not necessarily a good idea, but let's demonstrate that. So let's redo the graph. Graph fit response curves. We'll generate the response curves in the same way, but change the cutoff. So change that minimum neighborhood size from an estimate from automatic to manual. We'll just fill up the whole space by setting that to zero. That means that we'll make a prediction based on even the slightest little shred of data. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting a complete surface. You can see that the surface is nonlinear and shows strong interactions. That is, the response to temperature differs depending on the wet days. You can also see that in the contour view of the surface. So those are the basics. As you come up with questions, be sure to use the built-in user-friendly help system. Thanks for watching.